Chapter 7 A fulfilled moment, a darkness that begins to move. Greetings everyone, this is BJ Black, and welcome to part 73 of my Let's Play of Amayui Castle Meister. So we just recruited Meek Shimano into our party. And now we get to see the opening of Chapter 7. So, in the northern portion of Influs Kingdom, there's a broad forest region surrounded by a mountain range known as the Uterid Sacred Mountains. If you want to go to the God's Haze, you're going to have to pass through here. So in the Uterid Mountains is also the territory known as, Alia will call it the Thunderhead Sea. It's got lightning and ruling and sea of clouds in it. So Thunderhead Sea is what I'll use for a working title. Anyway, the Dragon Tribes live here. And they are the guardians of the holy ground of the holy lands we're headed towards. They would be stopping us at least if they had a chief who had the tribes of the the various tribes of the dragons unified. <laughs> Recall that they recently had their chief murdered, somehow. Anyway, some dragon refers to Karmerg. And they've just forced the earth dragons to retreat. Alright, so this is Karmerg. Perhaps you remember him? He says good job. Now that we've defeated the Earth Dragons, they have the Sky Dragon Bridge under their control. So, among the powers claimed by his particular tribe, the Haze Dragons, his ability to change the flow of the Sea of Clouds. And, thanks to this power, they were able to defeat the Earth Dragons in this case. So these other tribes that have been standing against his rule are being put down fairly efficiently. This other guy... Oops. This other guy... Presumably... is saying that... if the previous chief... Shiuke Toru... had recognized Kaldemirk here as the... successor... This pointless battle could have been avoided. Nah, Kalmug says, however, that no matter how awesome we are, since we've lost our chief, it's only natural that there would be a battle over the sovereignty. This is an unchangeable truth. Mm. And for this reason, they are showing their power. In order to awe these people into submission where they have no choice but to obey. He's a nice guy. Momentarily, however, he thinks back to a failure in his past. 
わずかな隙はどうしても生まれてしまうあの娘を取り逃してしまったのもそれに起因している But it's not complete he says There is a small opening left. He's singing about that little girl that he let run away. As a counterpoint, that one little girl who doesn't even know the pride and spirit of the dragons. What can she do simply by surviving? With these dragon tribes that might have followed her in this state, even if she is alive, what's. It would be suspicious if she even survived. That's an interesting interpretation. To think that because these people who might follow her are doing poorly in this civil war, she herself must be too weak to survive on her own. Ha, anyway. So, he's got to point out that the long reign of the lightning dragons over the dragon tribes is over. So they had a standing tradition that the rulership of the tribes, the dragon tribes, would be hereditary. But even if they protect that now, they wouldn't be able to remain strong. So, the one who ought to lead the dragons is the one among them who is the strongest. And now that Shiko, Shio Ketoru is dead, the only suitable person is himself. And it's true that they can't go for a long time without a chief. They need to settle down the unrest and forge a new power. So from now on, it's the Haze Dragons who shall lead. And the only sub-race still resisting is the Scarlet Dragons. Probably Fire Dragons. But anyway, the day when the unification comes is near. So, he feels like he's finally able to relax a little bit. And with this, Shiuketoru too can rest in peace. Hey, no, it's too soon to be calming down. Oh, is there a problem? Yeah, a big one. That one castle is headed our direction. Ah, so the Masteria's angels were defeated. That must mean they pretty must be pretty powerful there. How interesting. Let's see how much power they really have. Here's a line. 
That man did, however, entreat us to hold off until the preparations are complete. It doesn't say who that man is, nor does it say exactly what the preparations are about, but somebody told them not to mess with the castle until something was done. We don't get any information on that for a while, at least not as far as I've gone. Alright, so that was true, wasn't it? But, at this point we already don't need to obey that particular contract. In any case, we can't let them pass. If they're going to, going to come here, then we have to stop them. <laughs> Indeed, that is true. It is our role to do that. Again with the that man thing. Anyway, no matter how much he is wary of them, before our power, there are no enemies. In other words, he's saying he's invincible. So, their defeat is certain, since their god is descended into a tool, they can't draw out their true power with such shackles attached to them. Interesting interpretation we haven't heard yet. Alright. Don't hold back against the anybody who would disrupt Fiusia. If they plan on passing through here, then defeat them entirely. Blah blah, that's our mission. So with this, the Dragon Tribes will fulfill their duties, and those guys will see an end to their lucky lives. So it's just luck that got us this far, huh? So letting out a low roar, he prepares for battle with the castle. Boy, doesn't he think he's important. Alright, before heading any further north, we're going to review the information we have. I've always called both Fia and Mikshuana to this one. Fia still actually looks a little bit tired from, you know, all that stuff. So, Fia, are you alright? If this is too hard on your body and stuff, you should keep resting. <laughs> okay, she's fine. She says she's just full of liveliness now. And sorry for making you worry. Furthermore, at this point we get to talk about how we're going to be moving the castle, so she should be present. She clenches her fist and... Yeah, clenches her fist tightly and to show off how lively she is at the moment. She is putting on airs a little bit, but she's pretty much good. Okay. Now she asks Savaro how he did with the representatives of the residents. 
Well, probably no problem. They haven't made their decisions, but he told them. All right then. So, what happens now is we talk about what happens. What we talk about our next course of action. All right. So, Mikshana, the question for you. Okay, once again, in case it's been more than three cutscenes since we first learned it. Uh, well, I can't keep sniping that. From now on, she's going to be staying in, Mik in Gualacuna Castle in order to oversee Fia. It's a pleasure to be working with us. Please take care in moving the castle around and things. <laughs> so, overseeing, huh? It's true that we knew that she was basically overseeing us, but... She's kind of blunt about it. And furthermore... She's still trying to push in how she's warning us. Furthermore, she says it's a pleasure, but she gives off the distinct air of not liking this one bit. Hey. Alright, the pleasure is all ours. And she's going to be very careful, so don't worry about it. Alright, so let's get this discussion started. Man, she brushed Fia off. And she feels sad now. Okay, Avaro, you take it from here. She still wants to get along with Mikshana. Well, that's how she is. Alright, so... Avaro wants to confirm once again. Is it true that... She can't think of any way that we could separate Fia from the castle. And no, she still doesn't have anything. We know that she was sealed inside the weapon, and asking her again isn't going to get anything new. The mission she had was simply to confirm Fia's status and destroy the castle. Huh, is that so? In that case, shall we say that we don't know anything that you didn't say before the battle? She doesn't mind if we think that. Man, she's so harsh. But it is a bit hard for us to think that she'd actually have more. Okay, so... Now we're talking about it. The one who entreated you to destroy the castle was the High Priest of the Fuchsia Faith, right? Maybe if we talk to that High Priest we can get some more answers. Hmm. Is it really going to be possible to meet somebody so eminent? In terms of eminence, Fia ought to be higher. Uh, she is a goddess after all. <laughs> okay, clarification. While the High Priest was the one who informed her that the castle's existence was taboo, the one who actually entrusted her with destroying it was someone else. And if we meet that person, perhaps we can get some more information. Really? Who is this? 
One of the Dragon Tribe. The Absolute Ice Master Karlmerg. You know what, I'm just going to call him Ice Lord Karlmerg. So, not a human. Perhaps everybody who is eminent within the Fuchsia faith is like that. Hmm, come to think of it, what race is that Fuchsia? Well, that's an odd thing to ask. Just like it says, his race is God, right? Ah, but no, that's not all there is to being a god. There are those that are born as gods, but there are also others that become gods by gaining the power of a god. Hmm, is that so? It's true that among the regional gods there are demi-humans that were deified. And now that we're talking about it, how about you, Fia? Oh, her? She's been a god since she was born. And her nature is... connections. Fia, did you just remember that about yourself? Huh? Oh, no. That thing just popped out. Well, that's one more thing she's remembered since we started. Ah, anyway. She crosses her arm and, and looks really deep in thought. How surprising. To think that she'd just all of a sudden remember something she hadn't been able to remember. Perhaps, Avaro speculates, since we're getting near the god's haze, her memories will kind of start popping up like this. Alright, back on topic. The present god Fiyushia's true nature is not known to her. So, according to what's been passed down, uh, his uh, nature is not exactly known, nor is his appearance. Even the race, so to speak, is a bit complicated. Complicated how? Well, it is said that Fuchsia is a human and an elf, as well as a dragon. What the hell? That means that one or both or most of them are just lies. It's... We can definitely confirm that the truth is not being fully conveyed. Yeah, the more we ask questions, the more the mysteries come up. Yeah. Or rather, we should say we don't know anything. But we do com have confirmed that Fuchsia was not born as a god. And Fia yeah, was. So I guess we know that they aren't the same existence at this point. Well, even if we stand here thinking about it, we're not going to get an answer. So let's leave that aside. The next area we're going to be passing through is the Utrid Sacred Mountains. And they're going to be some pretty big mountains too. 
遊族が住まう山岳地帯です It's the Thunderhead Sea. The guardians of the Fuchsia faith, the dragon tribes live there. So, Mikshuana san, do you know about these people? Yeah, as she was heading about, she greeted them, at least. Ah, so. Is that when you got the request to destroy the castle? So the dragon tribes requested the destruction of the castle from her. Since they're right in front of us, that's actually a bit convenient. Probably, or rather almost certainly, this is going to become a battle, but if we can continue moving forward, it's a good chance to speak with them. And if there's anybody who knows something, we should definitely try and get some answers. All right, Mikshana, can we count on you for leading us the way or showing us the way? Well, what she knows, she can convey, but. She doesn't have an intimate grasp on the land around here. And not so much, certainly, that she could tell us where the castle will be able to pass through. Ah, that's true. Since she didn't have to pass through with the castle, she probably wouldn't be on the lookout for a route. And now let's think... Oh yes, there's Katorito. She's a dragon tribe, so... She's probably from the Thunderhead Sea as well. So if we ask if we have one of the dragon tribes among our acquaintances, we should probably ask her. All the all the dragon tribe within Influus Kingdom are should have should be out of the uh, the Thunderhead Sea, so she might have information. Yeah, pass the buck, Mikshuana. Okay, so our destination as the God's Haze has not changed, but we need to remember on the way to ask people for information. So, our path is simple. We ask questions of people that know stuff. It's certainly more effective than standing around thinking by ourselves, since we don't know anything. Thank you, Alvaro. All right, Fia, can you move the castle? All right, sure. To start with, we can move into the mountain, into the foothills of the mountains. All right, she's going to do her best. So, next up, the Thunderhead Sea. The homeland of the Dragon Tribes. Well, I think I'm going to leave off. Hey, there's a sex scene waiting for us. Nothing new here. So that'll wrap us up for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.